is this? What is this? No, 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 I said cod piece, cod piece, not pieces of cod. What, what part of that didn't you understand? Hi all, Jarl Steve here with a new Meat Hall short. It's not an origin story, but it is a little history for you. Now, we're going to talk about cod pieces. And that may sound a little fishy, but we're not talking about pieces of cod. We're talking about a piece of men's apparel from the late Middle Ages. Eh, probably earlier than that. Once upon a time, men had a problem. You see, their clothing that they were wearing had begun to get shorter and shorter. Specifically, this, their tops. So, for a long time in the Middle Ages, the simple tunic was a, you know, a nice tried and true and proven, comfortable and very utilitarian. It could be decorative, it could be, you know, a farmer's garment, it could be anything. But it was, you know, the standard of wear. Now, beneath that, usually the men wore either trousers or a, uh, what were called hosen. Now, in both cases, they're not what you think. Trousers and hosen were just simply two legs that were somehow attached up here in a belt or whatever, usually an under tunic, something like that. They were not complete pants like you might take into consideration today. You know, there was an opening, and usually you just wore those over your, you know, linen undergarments if you had those. So that left this exposed. Now, obviously, when you get a long tunic like this, I mean, it could be a little awkward if you're, you know, sit down and like, if you sit down like this, but, you know, generally speaking, it covered everything. Now, as time went on, doublets became the favored men's garment. Doublets started out as a, a padding of some sort that you wore underneath a, an armor breastplate or a cuirass, and those were shorter. And they became shorter as fashion trends proceeded. Towards the late Middle Ages, what was commonly called the High Middle Ages. No, not that way. They weren't high. It was just the end of the Middle Ages. Bordering on the Renaissance and then short into the beginning of the Renaissance, uh, doublets just got really short. And you got different types of pants that men wore underneath or they'd wear the, the traditional hosen you know, colors and things like that. You've seen it. But you still had the same problem in that these were not complete pants. There was a gap, and they were usually attached to the doublet underneath. So this gap obviously presents a problem for a man if he sits down. All of a sudden, things are just there. So what came into favor to take the place of that gap was something called a codpiece. And it was a thing of fabric and you know, just a cup or, you know, a decorative piece that went over that spot to cover it up. So now you had, and doublets usually had it like a, they, they separated down here, so that left that gap in there, and these became decorative. Uh, and as time went on, they became more than that. You see, a cod piece is obviously there to cover the, well, the cod. And if you want to know what the slang for cod was back then. You feel free to go look it up. We're not going to talk about it. But that was also something that could be, well, played with a bit. And perhaps overcompensated with. And this went on for a long time with cod pieces becoming more and more, more you know, more and more a decorative or a fashion thing and less and less a utilitarian thing going from, I just got to cover this spot up, out of modesty, to, I'm going to maybe overcompensate. And this end actually ends up going into other things as well. Before we move on, I'm, uh, I'm going to throw the link for the company that uh, that made the mead I am drinking today. It's a nice place out of Vermont named Groenfeld. 
Um, so I will throw that link in the uh, com or in the uh, description below. Feel free to go and check them out. They have some really tasty, tasty, tasty meats. So, moving on with our story. Cod pieces become uh, something else altogether. You see, knights and kings wanted to show off their manhood as well in their armor, which was it's nothing more manly than a suit of armor and for jousting. And some of them perhaps took it a little too far. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. As you can see. The codpiece became something other than just a utilitarian thing. It became a statement. And nobody, nobody made a statement more than King Henry VIII. Henry VIII was an avid jouster in his youth. But unfortunately, he had been injured, and he didn't joust anymore. But it didn't stop him from commissioning a fantastic suit of jousting armor as he got older. And that fantastic suit of jousting armor had one of the largest, if not the largest, codpiece ever created. Because Henry VIII was, well, he was a bit overdoing of everything. The man ate to excess, he drank to excess, he had wives to excess, and he actually, well, he had armor to excess. Henry VIII's codpiece... You can see it. I've seen it. It's in the Tower of Lon uh, London in, uh, in England. And, oh yeah, his codpiece weighed a whopping 21 pounds just for the codpiece. So there you have it. Today's Mead Hall short about something you wouldn't have probably even thought about, except that I'm here to do that for you. The codpiece. It goes from utilitarian to overcompensation. No. No, I don't have one. I don't think I really need one. Anyways, that's your meat all short for the day. I hope you enjoyed the interesting and bizarre topic, as usual. There are more to come. And, uh, well, there you have it. The cod piece. Scored. Nothing like a good meat after talking about cod pieces, right?